it's happening. Trump just beat Kim Jong un to the punch, makes him pay brutal price on his soil. Many Americans have been waiting to see just how the imminent conflict with North Korea would start. We know it's coming and we know that the North Korean dictator, Kim Jong un, is itching to strike. The question is, who will strike first? The U.S. obviously isn't looking to start a war that wouldn't happen on its own, however, the threats issued by Jong un give more than just an impression of his intentions toward our country. Since the president isn't one to back down from a fight, he has made it clear to North Korea that any action will be met with an even more painful reaction on our part. That being said, we as a country don't feel the need to give too many warnings before dealing with a problem. Diplomatically speaking, the president did go out of his way to make sure that our allies in the area were aware of his intentions. South Korea has aided the United States and our forces in many ways, not the least of which is housing our local military installations, and sharing intel. Most recently they've teamed up with the U.S. military to figure out what kind of precision strike might deal with the problem of North Korea once and for all. The people of North Korea seem to be more like prisoners, so the problem is almost entirely the dictator and his family. Because of that, the United States and South Korean forces have been working on a strategy for cutting the head off the beast and taking out Kim Jong-un. It was all just a plan until recently. Infowars reports that the decapitation team is deployed and ready to strike in North Korea. A U.S. Special Forces decapitation team is on board a nuclear-powered submarine just off the coast of North Korea. Buried in a Yonhap report about a joint U.S.-South Korean Navy war drill is the revelation that, a unit of U.S. Special Forces tasked with carrying out decapitation operations is aboard a nuclear-powered submarine in the group. Speculation is rife that the deployment could be what President Trump was referring to when he mentioned the calm before the storm in front of confused reporters two weeks ago. By decapitation team, they seem to be referring to a whole group of assassins. As far as anyone knows, you only really need an assassin, but when you're dealing with a high-value target, I suppose it doesn't hurt to have a spare or two around. Even though it's certainly not the responsibility of the president to inform the world about the movements of the military before they happen, many wonder if this could be what the president was hinting about after meeting with Pentagon officials just days ago. The entire mission, however, has been underway for months as the threat from North Korea has grown. There were reports that South Korea might be training their own elite force strictly for the purpose of taking out Jong Un. Back in June, it was reported that the U.S. and South Korea were training their special forces to track down and assassinate Kim Jong-un in the event of war as part of a joint operation. North Korea has warned that it could respond to the training exercise with another ballistic missile launch to coincide with the Chinese 19th Party Congress on October 18. Part of the war game revolves around practicing the evacuation of non-combatant Americans out of South Korea in the event of war and other emergencies. As with most of the threats emanating from those who wish to be our enemies, this didn't sit well with South Korea, China or the United States. Assets mobilized for the joint drill include the U.S. 7th Fleet's aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan, CVN-76, and two early brick class destroyers, the USS Stetham, DDG-63, and the USS Mustin, DDG-89. North Korea intensified its bellicose rhetoric against the United States on Sunday night, accusing Trump of being a war merchant and strangler of peace. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tirson says Trump has instructed him to continue with diplomatic efforts, although Tirson ominously added that this would be prolonged only until the first bomb drops. Everyone on our side of the pond would rather this conflict end without any more loss of life than necessary, however. It seems as if the powers that be in North Korea are bound and determined to not let that happen. While the United States is fervently looking for a way to not kill mass amounts of North Koreans who are more or less enslaved by their government, we're not willing to let ourselves be targeted in the process. If there was any doubt on the part of North Korea before whether or not the United States would retaliate to his threats, this is proof positive that while some might speak softly, we mostly just carry a big stick. Dick.